Let's graph y equals cosine 2 thirds x for one period. Let's write down all of our features for our graph. Right, so first of all, let's find the amplitude. The amplitude is the coefficient in front of sine or cosine. There's no number, which means that the coefficient is 1. Right? So amplitude here is 1. There's no amplitude change. The period for the graph is found by taking 2b, 2 pi and dividing by b. Now, b is the coefficient on x, so b would be 2 thirds. So we're going to divide 2 pi by 2 thirds. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would be equal to 2 pi times 3 halves. And right, you can cancel those 2's. Right, and so you'd be left with 3 pi. So that's the period. And then the only other features for our uh, for tree graphs are horizontal and uh, horizontal shifts that we call we call we call them phase shifts or vertical shifts. Now you can see from our equation that nothing is added to x and nothing is added to the to the function. So there are no phase or vertical shifts. So now with now that we have that information, we're going to write down. We're going to create our table of values. And we start with our old x values. Old x values are our quad, quadrantal angles. They're the places where we typically, where, we, where the graph of y equals cosine x would have its maximums, minimum, and x-intercepts. And that, of course, is 0 pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. That's never going to change, right? That's where cosine x and sine x has all of its important values. The x-intercepts, the maximum values, and the minimum values. And the y values that go with that, that's why we need to write down our old x, even if we're going to transform our old, our old x values um, with period change, we need to write those down because we need to match them with the y values. All right, so the y values that go with those x values at 0, cosine is 1, pi halves, cosine is 0, at pi, cosine is negative 1, 3 pi halves, cosine is 0, and at 2 pi, cosine is back to 1. Now those y values are not going to change. The only thing that changes y values are amplitude changes and vertical shifts. And we have no amplitude changes and no vertical shifts in this graph. The only thing that's going to change are x values, and that's because there is a period change, right? So this is going to be the new x. To find our values, our, um, our important values uh, from the period change, we take the period, which is 3 pi, and we divide that period by 4. Because everything good happens, all the interesting points happen one-fourth of the way. And that's still going to be true when we have a period change, the values are just going to change, right? Because we are, in this case, we are stretching our graph. So instead of taking 2 pi to go through a cycle, our graph is going to take 3 pi. Right? So the period divided by 4 is just 3 pi fourths. We start at 0, and now we just count up by 3 pi fourths. So 0 plus 3 pi fourths is 3 pi fourths. 3 pi fourths plus 3 pi fourths is 6 pi fourths which is 3 pi halves. Boy, I think I need more space right there. I can move my line. And by the way, you only have to follow along in your notes uh, because you already have this written down and graphed for you. All right, let me just write that a little bit neater. So 3 pi fourths plus 3 pi fourths was 6 pi fourths, which is 3 pi halves. Boy, that still doesn't look very good, but I think that's good enough. Uh, 6 pi fourths plus 3 pi fourths is 9 pi fourths. 9 pi fourths plus 3 pi fourths is 12 pi fourths, which is 3 pi. All right, so your graph starts at 0 again, and it needs to end at the same place that your, as the length of your period. So if the period is 3 pi, our fourth value, our, our last value here, our fifth value, needs to also be 3 pi. If those don't match, you have a problem. You've counted wrong, or you had an 
added wrong or something, right? So then you'll check those out. Let's label our graph, right? So since um, we need to include up to three pi, let's count up by pi. So we have pi, two pi, three pi, right? That will ensure that our graph fits on that particular coordinate plane. And this would be negative one and one. All right, so now let's graph our points. So our points, I'll write them down. So they're going to be our new y and the, or excuse me, new x and the y value. So that would be 0, 1, 3 pi fourths, 0, um, 3 pi halves, negative 1, 9 pi fourths, 0, and 3 pi 1. And now we'll just graph our points. So we have 0, 1, right there, 3 pi fourths, 0, so 3 fourths away there, um, 3 pi halves, so negative 1, so that's going to be 1 and a half, and we'll be at negative 1, 9 pi fourths, so uh, 1 fourth of the way between 2 pi and 3 pi, we're at 0. And then finally, 3 pi, 1. And here is one period of our graph. Because there are no changes to y, there are no changes to the range, there will never be a change to the domain. The domain will always be all real numbers for cosine and sine. And then the range, no changes, we're still negative 1 to 1. And those should be brackets for the range because our graph goes through both negative 1 and 1. Come on. There we go. All right, first graph's done. Let's do another one. All right, so now we're going to graph y equals cosine 1 half x over 1 period. Amplitude is the coefficient in front of cosine, so that is 1. The period is 2 pi divided by 1 half, so that would be 2 pi times the reciprocal, so that would be 2 pi times 2, or 4 pi. And there are no phase or vertical shifts. Nothing is added in this graph. Oops. Let me just fix that. Oh, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So now let's find all our important values. We take the period, which in this case is 4 pi. And divide by 4, right, because those important points happen one-fourth of the way. And so we're going to count by pi. Let's fill in the table. We have our old x, which is just 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves. I wish I could see my writing as I'm writing. It takes it a little while to pop up, 2 pi. The y values that go with that are, this is cosine, so 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. And you can even look at the unit circle we made in class to check those values out. Now we just need to change the x values to match the period. So the y values are, are the, those values that go with our old x values, and we're going to keep those y values and just transform the x values to match the period. So we start at 0. And now we're just going to count by pi, which is pretty easy. Pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So our, our points for our graph are 0, 1, pi, 0, 2 pi, negative 1, 3 pi, 0. Hey, what happened to my... Pi, oh, that's a negative 1. I couldn't even tell what that was. 
let's write that nicer. And four pi, uh, four pi one, as soon as negative one decides to pop up. That negative one doesn't look any nicer. There we go. Let's label our graph. So we're going to make sense to go up by pi. 3 pi, 4 pi, and 1, negative 1. Let's graph the points, and we'll be all done with this graph. Uh, 0, 1, pi, 0, 2 pi, negative 1, 3 pi, 0, 4 pi, 1. Connect the points. There we go. We'll put arrows because that graph is just going to keep repeating forever and ever. And that's why the domain is all real numbers. No change to the range. Negative 1 to 1. All right. In the next video, we're going to graph some more. See you then.